Hooray, the time has finally come for a good old guide for the RG handhelds. You're welcome. Uh, if you don't actually know the context of this, uh, uh, there are these like retro gaming handhelds. Uh, they are very cheap usually, at least lower end ones, usually less than 100 USD. They're fun. They have like SP form factors. They could look like the little things or the stuff. Uh, they look like game consoles and not like phones. I hate phones. They are not fun looking to make games on. And uh, they are very good thanks to Portmaster for running your own games on them. Normally they're meant for emulation, but here you can actually run a bunch of PC games on them. And that includes your Godot game. Assuming your Godot game isn't over spec uh, So it's very simple, kind of. Uh, the best versions of Godot are 4.2.2 and upwards. Uh, 4.2 started introducing their own ARM builds instead of like just being x86. So we actually can just pull those. And those ones work the best. They are the easiest to set up, and we just have template scripts that will work mostly out of the box. Uh, OpenGLES 3.2 is what your render is going to be. You do not have Vulkan. You are not going to be working with Vulkan. Uh, you're going to have about 1 gig of RAM and 1.2 to 1.5 gigahertz CPUs, typically, such as the RK3326 or the H700. Don't worry what any of this means. Uh, ARM64 is... Linux is basically what you're exporting for. And uh, Mono C Sharp, as of this, is pretty much possible now. It used to not be, and then it now is. So if you are making a C Sharp game, you are like a refugee from Unity or something, uh, 4.2 and upwards, just use these versions. If you're making 3D, use 4.4, because anything up below that does not have vertex shading stuff. Portmaster, this is how we actually run stuff. Uh, Portmaster is just a communal set of blobby stuff that makes uh, games run on a couple of different firmwares. Uh, you can you can just run the Godot game in a boot script. Uh, there's going to be a provided template, and I'm going to show how to set up your project to run out of the box with these. Uh, you can even submit your own games. If you've made a game and it works and it looks fun or whatever, uh, you can actually submit it to Portmaster and go through the whole process to actually PR it into their main repository. And even if it's a paid game, you can actually put it up there and then this, someone who buys your game can actually just buy the, put the PCK in there and then it'll run. Uh, so there's a couple prerequisites. Uh, first, you need a handheld. Like I said, I'm going to provide the link to a video I covered on like the 101 on what these handhelds actually are as game platforms. You need a custom firmware that actually supports Portmaster. Uh, Rocknix, Mustard OS, Arc OS, Newly, Hello Swedes, and Amber Elec. Those five are probably like the main big ones that have proper support. Uh, any stock ones that come with your handheld or modded stocks or something like Crossmix, they do not support Portmaster. And if they advertise it, they're wrong. If it does, if your game happens to run on Portmaster uh, with these kind of systems, it is entirely a case of luck and not because it's supported. Uh, for some quick quality of life notes, uh, if you're making a game or you have made a game, uh, try designing for 640 by 480 or 720 by 480. These general resolutions are good. 640 by 480 is God's chosen uh, real estate. So if you have this, you can pretty much assure it'll run look good on most screens you're going to find. There are smaller screens, but the majority of uh, devices are at a minimum 640 by 480. Uh, under 1 gigabyte of RAM usage is best. You want to make sure that you run on as many of these handhelds as possible for maximum exposure. You cannot pre-compile your shaders. You're going to have to do some tricks to... Anytime something spawns that wasn't visible before, you're, it's going to compile through OpenGL stuff. And there's not really much you could do about that, at least with how things are set up currently. Uh, so you'll probably have to do some tricks like blacking out the screen and rendering every object really fast or something. 
And uh, once you have your device and you're set up and you know how you want to get games on here and they work, test your game regularly. Make sure it still works on these handhelds. Make sure something didn't break. Because, my God, so many people have some weird spaghetti code that may just, I don't know, somehow break on handhelds specifically. Do not re rely on something like, say, a Windows-specific features and calls or something that will not work on a Linux handheld. So the good news, uh, it is actually not hard to get a pre-existing project working. Uh, you're going to actually need to, of course, tailor your game if anything is actually not correct. And if you have certain reliances, it's going to complicate things. But for the most part, it's probably going to be fine, especially if you're running 2D and you don't use any crazy features. So for this, uh, I'm going to use a little test project and I'm actually going to provide it. I don't know how long it's actually going to exist before I delete it off my servers, but for now I'm going to leave in, uh, where is it, CS test. Uh, CS test, it's a C sharp project because I think that one is more obnoxious to make and make work. So I'm going to make that one the temper or the template to work with. Oh, so I'm going to start it up. It's going to take forever to boot because here we go. That took forever. And uh, so here I've got a very simple scene uh, with the funny lizards. Uh, his name is Patch. Please fun. And I don't know anything about C Sharp anymore. I have not used Unity in many, many, many years. And I also don't use C Sharp for Godot. Uh, but once you've like done, I guess, all your building or whatever, there's a few things you want to keep in mind. First off, you should mess around with your game in compatibility mode because compatibility mode is uh, OpenGL. And on the handhelds we're working with, you more often than not do not have uh, Open... or uh, You don't actually even have OpenGL. You don't have Vulkan for sure, uh, but... You just may not even have OpenGL. You actually have uh, OpenGL embedded systems or GLESS, specifically GLESS 3.2. And as a result, there's going to be some occasional missing effects. For example, certain uh, particle effects in Godot or like certain shader features might not actually be available out of the box. And so you're going to have to look and see like what that might mean for your game specifically. This scene is not very complicated. It's just a simple automatically rotating camera with some lights and an animated model. Uh, mostly to kind of show off that these handhelds uh, can produce mind-boggling graphics. Uh, another thing you want to look at, go to Project. And you'll want to look for, you can type Vertex to Rendering, Shading, and you want to make sure Fort's Vertex Lighting is marked. Uh, for 2D games, this is probably not going to matter too much. But for 3D games, you don't really have access to pixel lighting. Uh, you can use it. The problem is that the hardware is so weak that it's going to choke on it. You really are going to be looking at games that maybe look as good as like a 3DS game at absolute best. And that's if you are really good at optimizing your scenes and uh, Godot in general. You may even need to like look at custom builds that strip a lot of fat but for the majority of games that's not going to be a thing so i'm just going to work with the vanilla we also provide only uh the official run times on part master stuff uh however you can make your own builds i'm not going to go into that here uh so we could set up an export uh for the, assume if you are only working with no GD extensions and no C sharp and it's all just vanilla Godot. You can actually like work with any PCK file. You could just dump that in even if it's like a Windows game and it's most likely gonna work. The catch is that if you have GD extension, your GD extension needs to have an ARM64 build or whatever specific architecture you're targeting. So for the sake of simplicity, you should probably just export to ARM64. So you can set up that, set up your uh, wherever you're depositing it to. Architecture, ARM64, 
ETC2ASTC. This needs to be on. This is texture compression that it targets this hardware. If this is not here, all of your 2D assets will simply not be found because they just won't have the C text that is needed. So for an initial build, we can just export. And here we've, uh, oops, I actually got it right here. Portmaster, CS test. I've dumped the PCK, the default vanilla mono Godot build, and uh, whatever the C sharp junk is. So we don't actually need go away. We don't actually need the runtime. We actually only need these two things. And you're going to want this in whatever folder you're going to put in, and you're going to want a shell script. Uh, we're going to provide the shell script. You can rename, say, uh, CS test, you rename it to your game. You can actually feel free to like make it a funny like CS test, whatever. You can actually look nice. The nicer this looks, this is what's actually going to appear in most firmwares on the front end. So you can make that look all nice. We'll just use mouse pad for this. Uh, so here, it's a bunch of stuff. Uh, especially if you've never looked at a shell script before. This looks intimidating. Don't worry, you're not really changing much. Down here is what matters. So here's where all your specific game configurations go. Uh, so you can change this to, for example, CS test. My game, we just want to replace. This stuff, Portmaster deals with. Don't worry about it. Uh, so this also gives you some rundown on the runtime and the executable. Don't worry about why there's two of those. That's back-end stuff. But for this, uh, I'm using Godot 4.4.1. This is a mono build. This is C-sharp. So therefore, I'm also going to add .mono at the end. And Portmaster will know how to manage it. This script will know how to manage it. Don't worry about it. We'll also be copying mono down to here. Between the version and the device art uh, argument. This, don't worry about. All gets handled automatically. Mygame.pck. Your main package file should be there. Don't worry about the pathing. That's automatically handled. Uh, controls. This is a control file for controls. I'm not going to go into the details on how to work with that, but uh, there will be a link on that. And it'll probably just be somewhere. I don't know where it'll be. Good luck. If your game uses special arguments, like you custom wrote some argument handling, you can actually provide them here. Uh, so for example, if you engage debug mode by typing dash dash god, which is actually what Crop and Claw 2 does, uh, then you can just pass that in through here. This way, you never have to go below this line. Once you go below this line, you're actually dealing with stuff related to the actual how we run this actual game. So don't worry too much about that. <coughs> so once you made your changes, copy. And looks like I've actually already got my thing plugged in. So where is my... And now I've just put in the Mu OS SD card that I'm using because uh, this system I'm using Mu OS. This one's weirder to figure out than the average firmware. Usually you're going to stick Portmaster's boot script and directory in the same folder. Mu OS does not do that. So I'm just going to show Mu OS because it's weirder. So here we have ROMs, ROMs, ports, and this is where you'll put your script, right? So like CS test whatever, I've actually copied that in there because I've already done this. I'm actually a time traveler for the record. And so ROMs, ports, and then you drop your shell script there. And then here in lowercase ports, you can drop in your data files. As you can see, this has the same general stuff. Now, if you run it and there's a problem, you can actually click on log.txt with whatever text editor you've got. If you go to Portmaster's Discord and you provide this and say, why does my game not work? They can help you with this. If you do not use this, they cannot help you with this. 
it'll also let you figure it out. Now this is just doing it over an SD card. You can connect it through wireless means depending on your firmware and hardware. I am using SE because SE is more likely to work, uh, at least if you're not on Windows and rely on X4, which I don't know what does and doesn't, don't ask me. I personally always suggest setting up Wi-Fi, whether it be through Samba, through a web interface, through SFTP. If you are developing and targeting these hardware, you want to iterate very fast and being able to just change files online and just move a couple files over and then open up on your console and see what breaks or where performance needs to be worked on or something. Uh, it goes much faster if you can access it over the wire wireless. So if you have a G350 or an R36S, get a dongle. If you have an SP or whatever, get something that will have Wi-Fi built in. It's highly recommended. So that's the gist, and now we're going to run it on BuOS on the device. Alright, so here I've got the RG34XXSP running MuOS. Uh, I put the files I need on here. Uh, this is containing the CS test, CS test dot shell script, and I've got the data already placed where it needs to go, which I've probably already shown. Uh, so I can just boot this script, and that's functionally going to be uh, the Portmaster ROM, quote unquote. Uh, you just give it a sec here, it's going to load, there we go. It's going to take a bit because the hardware is much, much slower than your average SSD and super CPU, but here we go, we've got it running. Uh, I believe it's VSync capped to 60 frames per second, so even if we can actually run it faster, uh, it's not going to run faster, uh, at least in terms of FPS. Uh, but there we go, that's as simple as it is. Uh, it works perfectly fine. I've done this for multiple games. Uh, that is a C-sharp game, as I've been showing. Uh, but you can even start up with a uh, normal GD script. That's even easier. They'll just be their own scripts, and that's all there is to it. Like here, I've, I've got Crop and Claw, and I will occasionally, like, boot it up and test and make sure that things are still working. So I can just, like, walk around here, and hooray. Everything is great. And uh, if you don't know yet, and this is the first time messing with Portmaster, pressing start and select will just drop you out of whatever game you're playing, uh, unless that behavior has been overridden. And that pretty much summarizes everything I wanted to get to. Uh, these handhelds are really nice. I, They are a bit high on the entry scale, because you have to like go install firmware and like pick out the right one, and you have to keep the original wires so the batteries don't wear out. But... I'd say that they are absolutely worth learning. You should definitely get one. They're not even a hundred bucks if in like USD, maybe a little more in some regions, but they are very, very nice. And there is such a wow factor to being able to just pull out a game you made on a song, on a little console like that and just show it to someone. Uh, it adds a lot of wow factor and it cannot be really un, uh, I cannot overstate how neat it is to see your games running on these forms. It was really neat when we first got Crop and Claw running. Anyways, for us, uh, this is from Dino Leaf. Uh, this is the company, and uh, we make games. Particularly, we're targeting these handhelds as official platforms. You can buy our games on Steam, and you should. Crop and Claw 1 is on sale. Crop and Claw 2 is going to be on sale one day, but you can wishlist it as of the like October 3 which is when I'm recording this you can also actually just download crop and claw one for free on portmaster uh, the game is provided for fun in full you can go and do a run on it it's about 10 hours blind 9 to 11 depending on who you are it's a bit niche because it's based on old old classic RPGs but it's absolutely a dragon RPG and therefore worth it uh, buy all our other stuff too